Greetings with pet people, my name is Wixia and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, if you can't tell by the title, I'm gonna just be answering some questions that my coworkers and or friends asked me about reptiles. During this quarantine, I feel like we're all very bored. Um, I'm lucky enough to be able to have a job and be able to go and, you know, see my coworkers and see people every now and then but I feel like a lot of people are bored and because of that they want to do something so I messaged my coworkers and I was like hey send me some animal questions if you have any now not all of them responded which like I understand not everyone's into reptiles but the two people who did respond you guys are gonna love their questions and hopefully I'm able to answer all of them I kind of previewed them I really didn't give them that much thought I just looked at them and then I was like okay I'll answer these to the best of my abilities on the video that way I can like kind of give a more authentic answering experience I don't know if that makes sense or not but yeah so we're just gonna jump right into the video um I think it's gonna be really fun hopefully you guys find it fun and the only way to find out is if you keep watching. So yeah, getting into the video now. Okay, so jumping right into the questions, as I said, only two of my coworkers really responded. Everyone else was busy, but they did give me multiple questions. So I'm gonna be displaying the questions right here in this area and then answering them as I go along. So the first question is from my coworker, Millie. She asked the majority of the questions. Thank you, Millie, love you. But the first question from Millie is, what is lizard? Well, Millie, um, let me see real quick. Oop, I'm gonna look this up. All right, so lizard is a reptile that typically has a long body and tail, four legs, movable eyelids, and a rough scale, rough scaly or spiny skin. So yeah, that is lizard. Glad to have that cleared up. Hopefully, the rest of the questions are a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna keep on going, I guess. Already off to a great start, guys. <laughs> okay, Emmy says, wait, I have one. I'm pretty positive we went over this when we got him, but I'm a bit dumb dumb and forgot. But why did Ryder lose his tail? Now, for those of you who don't know, Ryder is my crested gecko, and Emery and I actually went to a town over and got him from his breeder. Um, she went with me on that experience because I did not want to go alone because I'd never been to the breeder before and it was just I didn't want to end up in a situation just in case it went south. So anyway, Emery and I went to go get Ryder and um, whenever we got him the breeder told us like why he lost his tail because I was originally looking for a gecko with a tail and then I was going to get that one gecko I had set. And then I looked over in the same tank and there was Ryder. It was just a cute little geck without a tail. He was a little frog butt. It was adorable. I immediately fell in love with him and I was like, you know what? I want that one instead. And they're like, are you sure? He lost his tail. And I was like, yeah, that means nothing to me. I'll take him. And then while we were checking, checking out, um, I was curious and I was like, hey, why did he lose his tail? And the breeder just kind of laughed and looked at us and was like, <laughs> well, he got scared of himself. And if that's not the most me thing I've ever heard, um, my gecko threw his tail at either his own reflection or they said he might have made a noise or something, but he was alone in the enclosure and threw him his tail at himself. So that's answering that and if you have not seen Ryder I have a crested gecko care guide video and if I remember correctly I took him out of his tank in that video I don't I don't remember actually so anyway yeah my gecko's adorable missing his tail he's a frog but and yeah so that's that question moving on to Millie's next question she said, how much time will I need to dedicate to my vivarium if it is supposed to take care of itself, cleaning, changing stuff out like the dirt, and etc. Also, please explain snake. Well, first off, if you have a bioactive vivarium like the one next to me, um, and the one I made a video about, 
you don't really have to clean it that often. I do clean the glass once a week um, with a specific uh, animal safe glass spray but as far as like changing substrates you don't really have to do that if you have isopods and plants like a bioactive vibrium is supposed to. Now I do add in fresh soil um, or fresh substrate every now and then and just kind of like mix it around to keep um, from mold growing which again will not happen if you have spring toes and isopods but I just like to be extra thorough and make sure that there's not really any issues with my soil and that they get fresh nutrients. I'll put in some leaf litter every now and then. I think I've done it three times since I got or since I built this vivarium um, a year ago. So I've been pretty um, I feel like I do a lot more upkeep than people are supposed to on bioactive vivariums, but as far as like how often you would need to do it for say your um, dart frog enclosure, because I know she wants one of those, you wouldn't really have to do it as often if you have the correct setup. Um, glass cleaning though, you just need to make sure you maintain, you know, you, you keep up with that. That's about all you would have to do for that. And as far as also <laughs> explain snake, um, the best I can do for that is, you know, look up the definition again. So here's the definition, guys. It is a long, limbless reptile which has no eyelids, a short tail, and jaws that are capable of considerable extension. Some snakes have a venomous bite. I explained snakes, so I think we're doing pretty good in this video. <laughs> Alright, moving on to the next question. For Millie's next question, it's a really long question as you can see, and I will be um, splitting it into sections. So I'm just going to leave it sitting up here so you guys can read it and I'm going to answer it to the best of my abilities. So first question is, do milk snakes like being handled? As far as snakes go, my milk snakes um, don't seem to dislike handling as much as other snakes would. For example, Wilbur, he has zero issues being held. I actually feel like he enjoys it because whenever I put my hand in his enclosure, he'll immediately swither up onto my hand and he doesn't really get um, finicky or antsy whenever I'm holding him. He doesn't like start squirming a lot. He's not really an issue. Because my milk snakes are incredibly large, um, I feel like after a while they do start getting antsy and if they squirm a whole lot, I will put them back in their enclosure. You really shouldn't have snakes out for over like 10 minutes at a time. You shouldn't just sit there and have them like on you for extended amounts of time. It can stress them out. It can mess with their spine. There's just a lot of things that I would prefer not to um, have my snake out because of. But whenever I do take them out, they seem to not dislike being held. So that's, that's the way I'll say that. How would you go about moving all of your animals and their enclosures when you move it? To a different house. This is a great question because I feel like a lot of people don't know how to move reptiles properly and when I do move, which is happening later this year, I will do a whole video series on that and how to do that. But in short, the way you would do it um, for snakes, geckos, turtles, things of that nature, reptiles particularly, you would have a tub of sorts, like a plastic tub, a bin, poke air holes in it, Lay down paper towels or aspen bedding, a substrate that would not hurt them but would like support them and keep them warm or uh, keep them covered. You would have a substrate of some type in the bottom of the uh, tub and you would make sure that you have a tub that's just large enough for them but not so big that if you hit a bump or something while you're driving it would bounce or they would move a whole lot. So you would put them in the tub. You would have the tubs and put them in the back of your car or somewhere that you can like see them and regulate temperature and know that like, hey, they're all there, they're all safe. I don't ever recommend just shoving them in the back of a moving truck. I know I saw one YouTuber, um, animal YouTuber who was like, oh, I'm moving houses and they moved and then they pull up and they lift up the back of the U-Haul or whatever and there's just their boxes of reptiles and I, that freaked me out a lot. I understand not everybody has the ability to put all their reptiles in the back of their car, but the fact that they cannot monitor temperature would freak me out a lot. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to have them in their tubs in the back of the car. And then, of course, take down all things in the enclosure that could move around a lot and break the glass on the enclosures or um, mess up the sides. So take out, like, the heavy things, like the big hides if you have any. Take out those. I have two cement hides in each of my 
um, milk snake enclosures, so I would take those out and put those aside, pack them somewhere, and then of course just stack the enclosures in the U-Haul or whatever you're using to move. That would be the easiest and most efficient way to move reptiles. Cats, a cat carrier and go to your vet if you need something to like sedate your cat for the drive, but other than that, a cat carrier should be fine. I don't think there's like any major thing that you need to have for your cat other than a cat carrier. Don't recommend letting your cat out in the car with you. If it's a dog, of course, you can like buckle them in or something, but cats, no, just keep them in the carrier. How do I find a pet sitter qualified to take care of all of my reptiles? So this is hard. I've only ever used family friends to take care of my reptiles and even then um, she doesn't like touch my reptiles because she doesn't really like have snakes or want to touch the snakes. She's touched my gecko some but just have someone you trust like someone you know won't do something stupid and like try to take the animal out of the enclosure or like try to agitate them or do something for a reaction just have someone you would trust and someone who can read instructions pretty much like as long as you leave a long list of what needs to be done while you're gone you're good and it's not that hard to find someone unless you just trust nobody with your reptiles which i only trust one person with mine so whenever i move it's gonna be a pain in the butt do your reptiles respond to their names no I've tried calling them and they'll like come towards me but I feel like they're coming towards me as like before I was calling them anyway so to make myself feel good I'll be like hey Tony and Tony's walking towards me anyway and I'll be like oh look he came when I called his name no big deal yeah so I'm gonna go with no on that one does income play a role when considering what reptile I should get yes income should play a role on any animal you get um for example, if you can't afford it, don't get it. I have a rule, and my boyfriend knows about this, and he's actually very happy I have a rule with myself about this. If I can't afford to take care of the animal to, like, the greatest extent of what it needs, for example, if I can't afford to go buy a whole new enclosure at any moment, if I feel like the reptile needs it, I'm not going to get it. So, with my crusted gecko, whenever I got him, I had in my head I, I built his um, bioactive vivarium three four months in advance and I was like okay I'm gonna wait oh I built his first bioactive vivarium this is his second one just so everyone's aware this is his second one I've had him for close to two years now this is his second vivarium I did not film the first one at all second vivarium anyway I got his first vivarium ready had it ready months in advance and I was like okay I'm ready I can do this and then I ended up not getting him be uh, for an extra month and a half because I was like, oh, but what about whenever he needs to size up on enclosures? Hmm. What if he will need a bigger enclosure? Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna hold off. So I held off on it for a month and then finally I was like, okay, thinking about it financially, I can buy a brand new enclosure whenever I need to. I can buy all the supplies whenever I need to. So if you know you're gonna have the money for all of your reptiles and or that specific reptile then that's go for it absolutely but if you don't have the money or you feel like at any point you could possibly like go down in hours and not be able to afford your animals don't do it 110 percent do not do it because it's not right in my opinion for the animals if the owner can't pay for them because the owner should have thought of that in advance Another example is in my savings account, I have an allotted amount of money that I have set aside specifically for my animals, for vet visits, for um, litter, food, anything else I need. I mainly use my tips from my job to help like pay with litter and or pay for litter and food and things like that. Um, just so I have cash my I need, but I also have that set amount of money set aside just in case I need to take my cat to the vet or like I said need to go buy a new enclosure do something because my animal is sick or they need a, a upgrade in my opinion or something like that you just need to make sure you have money set aside for your reptile at all times because if anything happens wrong to them and you can't provide for them as an owner that is your responsibility and you have failed them if you can't do that I know that sounds a little harsh but that's just how I feel um, can snakes be lactose intolerant? No, they can't because 
they don't drink milk. They snakes don't drink milk. Um, no, they cannot be lactose intolerant. Can my pet reptile see me as a friend or are they not capable of love? I love this question, Millie, because it's so controversial and I've actually looked it up a lot. Um, reptiles theoretically can't feel love. It's, I don't know, like I said, it's really controversial. They can obviously feel fear and become uh, aggressive or angry or startled and they can react based on that. So in theory, if you can be startled or afraid or like have a defense mechanism based off of an anger or a fear system, theoretically you should be able to feel love, but there's like no proof that um, reptiles can feel love or any type of um, friendly or happy emotion, but like I said, it's, it's like, it's a thing that's being researched, it's controversial, not a lot of people know about it, you know, that fun thing. Um, will my reptiles notice when I'm upset and would they try to make me feel better like a dog would? Again, I'm gonna go with no, just because they don't have the whole love response. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say about that except for no. I'm gonna look that up later too. Hmm. So, yeah, those were my two co-workers questions and then one of my friends on Snapchat, because I also asked my Snapchat people to... Um, ask me reptile questions, but none of them really care about reptiles. So uh, I asked them to ask me questions and his question was how many different kinds of turtles are there from Kyle? Last time I looked it up, I think there were 356 different species of turtles on the planet um, Like known species of turtles and I know that sounds like a like not that many, but there are really not that many um reptile like turtles out there they're all kind of like there's not that many species but there's a lot of subspecies that's what I meant to say so yeah there's all of my questions I have so all right well hopefully you enjoyed today's video as you can see I just kind of went through the funny little questions my friends asked me hopefully you learned something from them um maybe the moving I think personally that the moving uh question was probably the most informational from my point of view but um i hope you guys learned something and enjoyed it and please stay tuned for next week's video i'm gonna get back into doing uh facts about my reptiles showing my reptiles um showing my cat i'm just gonna start getting back into actually showing my animals and i have a lot of fun videos planned um, I'm waiting for one big video in particular, but unfortunately the thing I need to do the video over has yet to be shipped. So I'll be keeping you guys updated on all of that and hopefully you liked it. Please like, please subscribe, and stay tuned for next week. So yeah, bye!